Hi, this is Allie, and you're listening to Talking Armageddon with BQ. Hello, hello, everybody. It is your boy, BQ. Welcome. It is the Impact Lounge. It is Talking Armageddon. Today's interview will be with William Weeks. If you're not exactly familiar at the moment, William Weeks was an enhancement talent on Impact Wrestling. He's been on the show three times against Trevor Lee, Grado, and Congo Kong. Really good interview. Enjoyed this quite a bit, and I think you are going to as well. It's kind of cool to get some perspective about someone who's in an enhancement role as opposed to one of the stars or knockouts that we see on a regular basis on television. So we talk a little bit about how we got into wrestling. You know that I don't typically like to do that in my interviews because it's very common that people ask those questions, but I kind of made the exception this time because I felt it was really um, relevant. So I think you're going to enjoy it. Roe was on with me. He asked a couple questions. We just had a good time. It, w- it was a great interview. And, you know, we, we talk about his time at Impact Wrestling, um, why he thinks he got several callbacks to, to go back a few times, and, you know, his perception of the company and just about his life in general. So I think you guys are going to really enjoy this, like I said. And um, it is Talking Armageddon. So without further ado, here is the interview with William Weeks. This is Sienna, and you are listening to Talking Armageddon with BQ. All right, welcome to Talking Armageddon here on the Impact Lounge. I am your host, BQ, along with Ro the Great, and today we are talking to the jerk Eric Curtis, better known to Impact Wrestling fans as William Weeks, who has appeared on several episodes of Impact in the last several weeks. We're going to get to know a little bit about William Get to, get to know him a little bit deeper, find out who trained him, what it was like to be on television, and how he was contacted by the company. So without further ado, I give you Eric Curtis. Eric, welcome to the show. Oh, thank you for having me, man. It's a pleasure. Absolutely. We're uh, excited to talk to you. I know a lot of my listeners were excited to hear from you and get to know you a little bit better. And um, with my interviews, you know, typically I try to avoid the really common questions about how people got into the industry and who were their favorite wrestlers, et cetera. But in this case, I want to make the exception. I feel like this is an opportunity for the listeners to get to know you and um, tell me a little bit about how long you've been training, where you've been training, um, or I guess how long you've been wrestling, but, uh, you know, wh- how you got into it, started training and, and who trained you? Yeah, sure. So, um, Basically, I would say around, um, obviously, when I was a young guy, I did the backyard stuff with my friends. Um, There were probably about 10 or 12 of us, and we would travel around to other guys' shows. And uh, eventually, um, just through people we've met, um, we started working in rings and collaborating with other shows. And um, all up and down Florida, as far as Jacksonville, even southern Georgia, um, we would drive like four to six hours um, and pool together money just to do our thing, you know. But then eventually uh, that fizzled out, obviously. People started uh, going in different directions. But me and my friend Steve Frick, we kept going with it. And eventually, I think it was September 2014, we found out about Jay Lethal's school in Clearwater, which is now... Uh, located to ta- in Tampa, and uh, once we found out about it, we basically just looked at each other and and we were like, it wasn't really a question of what we were going to do. We both pretty much knew at that time this is this is when we were going to uh, finally get our training and uh, go about this for real. I gotta say, you uh you scream backyard wrestler. Uh, kind of yeah. looking at you. You you um you look like the type that probably did some crazy unadvised uh, stuff when you were younger. Uh, surprisingly, surprisingly, I was uh, one of the one of the guys who took almost no risks. Steve, on the other hand, my friend Steve Frick, uh, he was a bit of a crazy pants, and uh, he would he was just uh, he wanted to be one of those guys who was down for anything. He was never afraid. Me, I was terrified. <laughs> so, <laughs> I was, uh, I, I was then, and still to this day, I've always been a very grounded wrestler. I just, uh, I don't think it's in my best interest to take uh, unnecessary risks. Okay, got to take care of your body. Uh, nothing wrong with that. So, how long, uh, how long ago was this? You're, you're saying you and your buddies, you know, found the Jay Lethal School and everything. So, how long ago was that? That was. Uh, we we entered into Jay Lethal's wrestling school in 2000, 
2014, uh, around this time in 2014, the training program was four months. And when we completed that, we were basically told, hey, uh, go get them. <laughs> All right, clap, clap, break, go get them. All right. Um, yeah, exactly. So, so I got to ask, was, um, now was this a wrestling school where, Jay Lethal was actually involved in it because there, there's this. Um, Chris Jericho likes to tell a story about uh, when he started wrestling at the Hart Brothers Academy, and then he gets there, and and two of the obscure Hart Brothers are there for one day, and then it's <laughs> after that, it's just a bunch of yeah. random guys. So, uh, was Jay Lethal hands on in this school, or was it he was associated with it by name, or what? He he was um, he was brought on by uh, a guy named Mark Karoftis who ran a company called Uproar Pro Wrestling, and he wanted to have a wrestling school. And uh, he contacted Jay, who who uh, lives in the Tampa area. And uh, they came to an agreement, and the school was opened. And um, and the rest is history. And, yeah, he was very hands-on. Uh, he was there all, like, every, basically it was Tuesdays and Thursdays were my classes. He was always there every once in a while. If it was like an emergency or he had to be at a show or something like that, he would have someone fill in. But uh, if anything, it was always him there and possibly friends of his. Um, we had a lot of guest trainers. Oh, really? Okay. From uh, Were the guys from the Independent Circuit or Ring of Honor? Um, well, at first, um, Angelina Love was there a lot. Oh, so I go. got to learn a lot. I got to learn a lot from her. I was actually very grateful that she was there because there were certain things just in the introductory levels of training that um, I wasn't getting being a smaller guy. I was probably one of, if not the smallest guy there. So there were certain things that um, she was able to show me how to do differently that were, uh, I guess, easier for uh, people of smaller stature like myself. That's actually really interesting. Um, are you able to to recall anything that she she might have told you that you kind of still hold on to to this day? Yeah, absolutely. Um, performing a headlock takeover, Jay tried to get me to do it his way uh, several times, and basically everybody else in the class got it except for me, and I felt <laughs> kind of silly. But for some reason, the way he wanted my feet as I posted to to give this headlock takeover. I could not get it, and and it was it was actually kind of upsetting me. He, I think he could tell I was frustrated, and I think that's when Angelina stepped in. And she's like, "Here, try it my way," and boom, like I got it like first try. So I was very grateful to have her there. Hey, that's that's pretty badass, actually. Um, to go in as a male and not not be too proud to to listen to uh, one of the greatest knockouts champions of all time. So, um, that's oh, absolutely good stuff. not. She is a she. Uh, Thank yeah, she is a legit badass. So I was uh, super stoked to have her there as often as she was. She actually lives uh, pretty local to me. So I'm, I live in Southern Illinois, and she lives in St. Louis, which we're we are basically St. Louis where we live. I mean, we're just we're right on the border of it. So uh, her and oh. uh, her and Davy Richards live locally. So I'm, I'm waiting to run into them one day. But surprisingly enough, they never seem to wrestle locally here. I don't. We have a lot of indie shows, and they're never booked for them, oddly enough. But uh, so, uh, so I, I got to ask, what was um, what was Jay Lethal like in person? Because he seems like a guy with a lot of personality and charisma. You know, obviously he has a history of uh, imitating Macho Man and Ric Flair and everything. So, what was he like? Um, you know, as a person, as a trainer, just just in real, you know, in real life. Uh, he's he's um, he's one of the sweetest guys I have met in this business, uh, hands down, uh, a completely cool and laid back. He just gets excited about, about wrestling. So when we get into it, that's, that's when the guy you see on TV starts to come out, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And, uh, but, but otherwise, you know, he, he basically gave us this big speech at the beginning of the, of the school. He was like, listen, um, there's guys who are, who are going to force you to, uh, work out and do all these squats and run yourself ragged. Uh, I don't really think that's my job to teach you how to be an athlete. I'm here to teach you how to be a professional wrestler. I'm here to teach you. His words were, I'm here to teach you how to professional wrestle. And I, I found that uh, quite funny. But uh, he was. He also said some, uh, something along the lines of, you know, if, if, we're, if I'm trying to show you something and you're not getting it, 
don't don't think that I'm going to get mad at you for not understanding it. You know, I'll I'll have you try it a few times, and if and if you're not picking it up, we'll move on and come back to it later. So it was it was a very very laid back atmosphere. Did you happen to know? Um, I mean, obviously this was like about three years ago when you were at backstage with Impact. Did you chop it up with a uh, Ava Story, Brandi Brandy Lauren at all, who uh, also trained with Jay? Yeah, yeah, she was part of the class that came after mine, and um, so we got to hang out a lot and, and get to know each other um, while she was training. So uh, when I got there, she was like uh, one of the only people from my class there, uh, anybody that I really, that I knew aside from people that had been guests at the school, which I think was really only uh, Angelina and Davey. So to your knowledge, yourself and... Um... Ava were the only two from that general uh, time frame to appear on TV right now or even still be sticking with it? Uh, well, everybody from my class ha um, that, that finished has pretty much stuck with it. As far as uh, Impact Television, uh, pretty much just me and Ava right now from, from, our, from the school. So you mentioned a second ago that you're uh, here, uh, not here because I don't live in Florida anymore, but uh, you're in Florida in the Tampa area. Was that we was your area hit by the hurricanes at all? Uh, it was, but what, by the time it got to my area, it was just about a category one. Fort Myers and Naples, I think, might have gotten uh, the worst of it as far as Florida goes because uh, I think when it landed there, it was in a category three. That's too bad. You know, I lived in Florida. Um, I lived there twice, actually. Oddly enough, um, oh. but, but uh. So uh, I, I lived there the first time when I was on active duty with the military, and then when I got out, I um, moved back, and then I, I left again. So, the, so I was there for four and a half years the first time, two years the second time, and I never had a hurricane. So I was really fortunate about that. Wow. They, always, they always said, you know, as long as you live here, you will have a hurricane. And and uh, gosh, I really uh, lucked out with that one. Funnily enough, yeah, hurricanes are a regular, uh, basically an annual thing here. Uh, we have our hurricane season out here in Florida. Funny part about where I live, the area, the Pinellas Pasco area, is for some reason, anytime a hurricane is headed towards us, it always seems to go right around us. And uh, so, so we're all very lucky. Uh, people get a little bold and they, they like to throw thing, boast about things like hurricane parties, and whatnot. <laughs> but I can't help but feel that there's just some form of karma that comes with that. Absolutely, just uh, <laughs> just basically making fun <laughs> you know, of it, like, and yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's nothing to mess with. So uh, I always I'm always braced for something to go down, but for the most part, um, I basically like to wait it out and see what it says. Like maybe the day before it makes landfall. Most cases uh, we're good though. I've only been to Tampa once, and it was several years ago. How uh, how far is Tampa from Orlando? I don't remember. It's it's roughly uh, two hours, okay. um, give or take, uh, maybe an hour and forty five if you if you uh, punch it. All right, a little bit of a drive. Um, so if you're if you're comfortable talking about it, I I want to talk a little bit about where the name William Weeks came from. So some may be more familiar with you as Eric Curtis, but you've taken a different moniker on TV. So what can you share about your name and how you kind of came up with this and how did how did Eric Curtis just become William Weeks on TV? Well, I'm I'm here to tell you I did not come up with the name. Uh, I was at my shoot job. I work in a shopping mall in a food service location. We'll just leave it at that. Um, and I got a phone call. Uh, usually when I'm at work, I I just hit the button to stop the vibrating. And then I go back to work. In this case, I thought maybe I should look at this, and it said Jay Lethal. So I I put it back in my pocket, and I said to my boss, I said, "Hey, I gotta take this real quick." <laughs> and uh, and when I answered the phone, uh, he was like, "Hey, do you want to get squashed by a big guy on Impact?" <laughs> and I said, uh, "You know, yeah, absolutely." I mean, I think I thought about it for two seconds, even though I already knew what my answer was. So. Uh, he he said he asked me what my indie name was. I said Eric Curtis, and he said, "Oh." Uh, and as it turns out, um, side note, Weeks is my um, real last name. Oh, okay. And he thought he, he was saying we were thinking about using your real name, and he, and uh, then um, 
we just left it at that. He was like, oh, we'll probably just use your indie name. So when I got to the studio, Rockstar, when I met Rockstar Spud, he looked at Sanjay and he said, is this William Weeks? And I was like, oh, man, that is just the coolest name. <laughs> <laughs> and and, uh, and Sanjay was like, yeah, that's William Weeks. He's like, oh, yeah, this guy's definitely getting an entrance. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, that and that was it. So I, um, it, to my knowledge, I believe it was Sanjay who came up with the name, but don't quote me on that. Okay, that's actually pretty interesting. So, you've been on the show three times so far. Um, if I remember correctly, you've faced Trevor Lee, Congo Kong, and Grado. Trevor Lee famously wrestled you with his X Division Championship on. wasn't really his championship, but he uh, <laughs> wore it during the way. So, did you know prior to this that he was going to wrestle like that? Uh. I did. Yeah, we had a we had a meeting and um, where, where we basically went over uh, what, how it was going to go. And uh, I popped huge when I found out he was going to wrestle with the belt on. It was and and uh, just being there in the moment, I recall having to uh, av- try not to smirk or laugh and make sure I, I keep the serious face on because him with the belt on was just like, wow. It was it was hilarious. Yeah, I was actually watching that clip today. Um, since you since you were coming on, and I just uh, I just kind of wanted to watch that. Um, and, it's a and good I was, watch. Yeah, I was thinking to myself that that's got to be hard to uh, keep a straight face in a moment like that. You know, I noticed you kind of turn around and hyped up the crowd and everything, and I'm sure that gave you an opportunity to like uh, let it out a little bit instead of uh, just having to stand there. Yeah, it was. Um... It, it was honestly when I watched it back, I was kind of frustrated with myself, you know, where where I was, uh, you know, when I trained with Jay, he he had a lot of friends who and he himself worked on television. And so he knew the uh, the ins and outs of working the hard camera. And when I watched that match back, it seemed like before the match during the promo, every time the hard camera cut to me, I turned my head away. But I'm just so used to working with the people and and uh and not a television camera that it, it was just an inex- uh, it was just inexperience on my part but uh i got over it i brushed it off you know yeah i can understand that as as far as someone goes through the training and uh feels that way but i, I will say as someone who watched it i mean I, to me i didn't think you looked awkward or anything like that i mean uh as a, as a fan watching i i, I thought it was oh, well, all thank right you. so <laughs> and, and so you, you wrestled um Congo Kong and before we get to Congo Kong uh beforehand you had a <laughs> kind of a uh, run in with Laurel Van Ness and she um <laughs> yes oh, oh, I don't know if she was trying to uh, recruit you for her next man or what it was but um I, I found your reactions to her really funny because you were just dead you were you I don't know you were like dead serious and looking like real real uh just <laughs> just had this look on your face at her like who the hell is this Oh, I had to, uh, I really had to work because, uh, on one hand, I, I, I mean, cause I met Kong in the back before the show. Um, uh, and, and he's just like, just for the record, he is, uh, not only an awesome guy, but he is incredible in the ring. Uh, he's deceptively athletic and, 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 uh, and one hell of a professional and absolute pleasure to be in the ring with. What was it like knowing you were going to face him? I mean, what what was the mindset with such a big guy who can throw his weight around like that? I mean, um, just <laughs> what what was going through your mind when it said, "Hey, you're you're taking on Kong tonight"? Who? Um, basically, I knew I was I was in for a a real one, as I like to call it. You know, uh, there was basically no getting around it. I mean, that's that's why I'm there. I'm getting my butt kicked. That's it. <laughs> so. <laughs> You know, uh, when I, f- I actually found out a while before um, the, the actual taping, so I had a chance to do my homework. And uh, once I saw who I was up against, I was, I was uh, quite honestly, I was very excited. I was obviously there was that intimidation, and uh, there because this was going to be my first ever television. But uh, after watching his work, you know, from from a wrestler standpoint, from, from an insider standpoint, I, I, uh, I knew I was in good hands. How was it like taking that cannonball in the corner? Because I've always, um, 
watching that on TV, I'm like, I don't envy whoever's taking that move. And there's certain moves that are a lot safer than they look. Uh, that doesn't really look like one to me, but no, I, I tell you, my friend, that's a pretty uh, that's a pretty good cannonball he's got there. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, yeah, it was it was um, it was intense. It was it was really intense. But uh, I mean, as you can see from the video, if you watch the match back, you know I wasn't like bloodied or um, you know anything or like that. I was certainly not injured, and and that's what I mean when I say that guy's a hell of a professional because that's a nasty looking move. And uh, I lived to wrestle another day after that. So, were you more? Uh, were you were you more worried about taking that move or the finish from the top? Uh, it, it's funny because um, the guys in the locker room, uh, when I mentioned I was wrestling Kong, uh, somebody said that splash is stiff, and they were trying to scare me. <laughs> and and uh, once again, terrified as hell as the splash was coming down on me. And after it was all over, I, I, I was like, man, what a pro. Because once again, I mean, down for the count, but I live to wrestle another day. I can't even fathom taking a move like that. Um, I mean, sometimes I'm laying on the ground and, you know, my four-year-old will jump off the sofa onto me and that hurts so much. Uh, <laughs> yeah. My so. roommate knows all about that. He's got a, he's got a young daughter as well. And they, they play wrestle and her signature is the double knees to the gut. So from it, the top rope. <laughs> yeah, there we go. That, I'm familiar yeah. with that one too. Uh, so that must have been pretty cool for you to know that you were going to be on television. I mean, I don't know if it's something you ever um, expected to do or whatever, but I can imagine for you know yourself, uh, friends, family, that was a pretty cool, pretty cool to ha- uh, thing to happen for you. Did I dream of it? Yeah, absolutely. Did I expect it? Not so much. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, I knew that you know because I picked the right school and. Just for the record, if being a professional wrestler is something you want, um, you you have got to pick the right school. There's people who out there who will who will take your money, who have never, you know, um, who will tell you this is what you got to do to make it, but they've never made it themselves, you know. And and um, for that reason, I, I I usually I ask myself like, how can you take people's money? So. Make sure wherever you wrestle that your head trainer, wherever you train, that your head trainer has a name at the very least, Absolutely. you know. Um, mm-hmm. So I knew I was I knew that the that I was uh, connected through Jay, but I just did not know how much. He even said uh, at some point because Sanjay came and visited our school uh, to sit in and watch training one day. I think a, about a day later or the next class, he said that uh, that they had uh, that uh, Sanjay and Jeff Jarrett had eyes on us. And that um, they were making plans for the future, and that they uh, that we were being considered. And I didn't think anything of it at the time, you know, because these these were just these were just words. Although Jay's word is is uh, as good as anybody's, but uh, I, I really didn't um, it really didn't occur to me how real that was at the time until I got the call. Yeah, so I was going to ask, um, I mean, you already answered the question, but I was going to ask how you ended up uh, getting contacted by Impact. So, I, I, I mean, I know you trained with Jay several years ago. Was So, uh, do you still train at his school? Because um, I know you, you talked about having a name. Michael Elgin from uh, New Japan has our local school here. I mean, he lives literally a, a few minutes away. And he, uh, you know, after he finishes, you know, I think it's like a, it's a six month program that he has where the, um, the wrestlers will pay for six months. And then after six months, they train for free. They, they continue to train there after you, you know, you've paid for the first half year. Uh, so do you still train down there at all? You know, like, or, or are you still associated with the school in any way? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, they, they, uh, they have a new, uh, name it's the uh, tampa bay pro wrestling academy or the lethal academy I, th- I don't know if they've settled on one name yet but through that school they formed tampa bay pro wrestling and they run shows out of um a place called the big top flea market in tampa and uh they're actually about to hold their first show at a country club called the roundup in tampa on october 8th uh which i'll be a part of other than that, though, I, I, I have to say I have not been by the school in a while. Uh, I want to. 
unfortunately for me, I've, you know, things get in the way. I'm not going to sit here and make excuses. I, I allow things to get in the way. Unfortunately, they, they have to do with just finances and, um, having to still work my regular job in order to make, make the bills at the end of the month. You know what I mean? Right. Of course. Um, October 8th, that's actually my birthday. So oddly enough, um, Oh, happy birthday, man. Mine's the 11th. Oh, is it really? <laughs> it is. Yeah, I'm going to be 33. Okay, well, <laughs> well, I'm going to pretend you didn't acknowledge my birthday because I'm turning 38. I'm getting uh, I'm on the wrong side of 30 on, on my way to 40. So um, this oh, is... Oh, no. This, no, <laughs> this is one of those birthdays I'm not really looking forward to. But but we all get old, so it's all right. But it, that's cool. We're both uh, both Libra is a good deal. Uh, yeah, you and I still have many, many good years left in us, my friend. <laughs> there we go. I like that. So... Uh, <laughs> So then you do have that contact with Jay. So he was he was um, the, actually the one contacted by Impact, and then uh, he went to you. Yeah, yeah, and and that was another thing that really blew my mind. Like I could have thought of a few other guys because they were specifically looking for a guy like me, you know, a little guy. Mm -hmm. And I could think of a few people I trained with who were who were not. Not little, but they were uh, around my stature, maybe bigger, maybe a little, bit, some a little bigger, some a little smaller. But he chose to call me, and, and uh, I'll never forget that man. It means the world to me. It's it, it did then, and it does now. What do you? Uh, so you've you've appeared there three times, though. What do you think is the reason that the companies continue to bring you back? So there's a lot of people who will come onto Impact in an enhancement role, um, and one of the females, Amber Nova, she's she's like a regular. Um, in that sense, but, uh, with some of the guys, I mean, they'll show up once and, uh, and be gone forever, you know, and, and you're, you've appeared three times with, uh, the aforementioned Congo Kong and Trevor Lee. And then you had, uh, the match with Grado. Um, first of all, I got to say, I don't think I've ever seen Grado win a match before. So, uh, oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> I was his first. Oh, it's an no, honor. no, he, he's won matches, but it's usually, um, there's usually like shenanigans involved, like someone trips over him and he'll roll him up or something like that. But I've actually <laughs> never seen him hit like a, a finisher or anything. <laughs> so, uh, but you, you did get some offense on in on him before the bell. But uh, but what do you uh, what do you think the reason has been that they uh, you know, willing to bring you back several times? I don't know. I I, I don't know. I think um, I think this as far as like what I've been doing at Impact, um, being an enhancement guy. Uh, I don't know that there are a lot of guys, uh, out, uh, a lot of the guys like me on television right now. Um, obviously, uh, it started with, um, James Ellsworth in WWE. And I think if it weren't for that, um, perhaps I might not have been called from what I understand, they were in the market for a little guy. And uh, when they called my trainer, he said, I know just the guy. And and uh, I was the one he called. Yeah, you know, I was reading a, uh, a review on Impact, the, the, uh, the show after you debuted, and uh, the uh, writer of the website had actually said, you know, if booked correctly, this guy could be better than Ellsworth ever was in that role. You know, uh, the writer really liked your look and your demeanor compared to, you know, uh, the, the, you know, the comparison was made to, to him, you know, fair or not. But, uh, you know, the, the writer did say if they don't overuse this guy, you know, like as, you know, bringing you every single week type of thing, but, uh, if they don't overuse him. He can actually be, you know, their version of Ellsworth, but even, you know, even, uh, better in, in that, uh, in the impact landscape. So, yeah, yeah. It, it, it might've been, um, it might have been Pro Wrestling Torch, perhaps. Uh, there was there was a writer that did a write up. Uh, he called it like I don't remember what he called it. I was I was mentioned, and he actually had very kind words for me, and uh, it really it was really flattering. I didn't really know how I was going to be perceived by the fans. Usually, when I come through a curtain, wrestling fans are like, oh, what the hell? <laughs> you know, <laughs> what well, yeah, what's this guy going to do? You know. I, I hope that fans were pleasantly surprised. Yeah. And I think it was PW torch and, um, and that's kind of how you and I started talking. Cause you actually listened to uh, my review of impact and, uh, I, w I was talking I about did. you and yeah. And I, I said some kind things too. And I, um, 
the last couple of times you've come on, I've, I've continued to say, you know, this guy's, this guy's great. Like, uh, <laughs> I, I absolutely get a kick out of when, when, uh, I see you on the, on the screen and everything. So I think that's really cool that, uh, they've continued to bring you back and I really hope that they continue to. Thank you. So have you got a chance to chop it up much backstage with, with the talent or do you kind of come, come and go? Uh, you know, since I'm, I'm there so seldom, uh, there's really only, um, a few people that I actually, uh, hang out with right now. Uh, when I go there, I, I tend to gravitate towards Ava, obviously, you know, we, uh, we went to the same school and we're familiar with each other. Uh, so we always, you know, shoot the shit and hang out, talk about our match and, and whatnot. Uh, also, um, KM took uh, took a shine to me early on, and so he's always uh, he's always coming over. And I'm like, so what's up, William Weeks? <laughs> I've been politicking hard for a William Weeks match. Oh man, it's so funny. He's 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 a he's a great guy. Don't call him a liar though. I'm just no, saying. No, def- definitely don't do that. I oh, my God. I I was gonna ask you about KM because on Twitter when you were last time you were on Impact, you said uh. You tweeted at him saying, uh, I forgot what his handle was, way too cocky or something. You said his favorite wrestler. Yeah, yeah. Um, he actually, when the episode with me and Trevor Lee was coming up, I, I put a tweet out um, accompanied by a picture of me in the ring um, promoting it. Uh, and he saw it and he retweeted it. And then he, he put out uh, a tweet saying that, that I was his favorite wrestler currently. And <laughs> I, I don't know how much of that is, is truth. I think, I, I think it's like a percentage of truth combined with, Oh my God, this guy, you need to see William weeks. I'm t- <laughs> like, I'm telling you <laughs> wink, wink, nudge, nudge kind of deal. But, uh, he's, he's a fantastic guy backstage. I'm a uh, very big fan of KM. I hope, I hope we do see that match. I hope we get William weeks versus KM. Me too, man. Bring it on, KM. Let's do it. <laughs> I hope you're ready to take that uh, finish that he does, though. That he, uh, it's kind of like a power bomb with a double knee to the back. Oh no, no, I'm not looking forward to that yeah. at all. <laughs> I'm going to avoid that at all costs. Well, there we go. I'm not. I'm not <laughs> saying you're. I'm not saying you're going to lose. You might pull it out. Never know. Yeah, you never do know. Um, <laughs> so I want to ask. Uh, you know, obviously seeing you on TV a few times. You know, obviously the matches have been very quick and everything, but uh, how would you characterize yourself as a competitor on the indie circuit? And, um, you know, if we were to watch on the indies, uh, I, I believe you even won the lightweight championship or in Tampa there. Uh, what what could we expect to see if we're watching you in an independent match? Uh, well, basically, I try to just be, uh, I'm, to be honest with you, I'm more comfortable as a heel. I think it's, uh, I think it's just easier for me. My character is is kind of what you see on Impact, just flipped in in the opposite direction. More kind of like the guy you saw uh, cheap shot Grado from behind. Right. That's more my style, right there. Hey, Will, how's it going, man? Thanks for uh, coming on. As you know, you're becoming a wrestler. How did you go about developing, you know, the type of moves that you wanted to execute? Oh, thank thanks, Ro. Um, Honestly, from being a kid, I tried to think about the guys that that I gravitated to as a kid, and um, and basically those guys were um, like uh, Hooventude and Ultimo Dragon. Diamond Dallas Page was was my number one guy, and also I was a huge fan of Booker T. Uh, so uh, he used to have a little arm ringer, uh, followed by a sort of a super kick. And I've always tried to do it like him. I never quite could because, I mean, <laughs> it's book T. I mean, come on. But uh, I like to think that over the years I've kind of turned it into my own little uh, move there. I do. I kind of do it my way now. Um, and just other other guys, as I got older, I started realizing I probably should try to imitate people more my size and and sort of find who I am from there. And just have a have a foundation of little guy moves, 
because I'm always going to be a small guy. Let's, uh, I mean, it's just, it's just a fact of life. So, uh, <laughs> Spike, du- Spike Dudley was also a big in, uh, influence on me. Uh, you, you can see me, uh, in any of my various indie matches, uh, probably attempt or execute the Dudley dog, I think is what they called it, or the acid drop in ECW. Lately though, I've tried to try to make it a little safer. I go for a slice bread number two, if I can ever get my hands on the guy, you know? <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's, that's a nice collection of wrestlers. That's that's interesting. What are your long-term goals as far as, um, you know, I know you've uh, been on Impact and you compete in the Indies. Um, you know, are you comfortable just staying with the Indies? Do you have aspirations on, you know, being on TV more, you know, pay-per-view? Like what's, you know, your long-term goals? Well, I mean, I, I hope this isn't a boring answer, but I've always just said I'm, I'm willing to go as far as the business will take me. You know, I, I understand that I'm, I'm the kind of guy who's probably never going to be a world heavyweight champion. Uh, but, I mean, there's light heavyweight championships. There's tag team championships in just about every company you go to. So um, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm hopeful you know, that, uh, I can make some place like impact wrestling my home. That, that would be, uh, that would be a dream come true. Uh, back in 2005, when I first discovered impact, uh, TNA total nonstop action wrestling at the time, I, uh, I would go to the pay-per-views. They were free to attend. I, I believe they still are. And, um, I would sit in the crowd actually every time I come through the curtain that I've come through the curtain there at impact. I, the first place I look is right over in that spot where I used to stand to just sort of remind myself, man, hey, look, you know that thing we talked about? We did it. <laughs> <laughs> you know? What would you – and I, I know you stated, like, you know, for aspiring wrestlers to make sure that they're going to a school where there's some kind of name because – um, there are a lot of schools where, you know, unfortunately, you know, a lot of people, they're paying and, um, you know, there there's really not the uh, networking opp- opportunity. So they end up just kind of yeah. essentially wasting money. Um, but what would you advise to aspiring wrestlers? Because I know sometimes some of these wrestlers with the schools, you know, you know, like you're saying, Jay Lethal has one out in Florida. But, you know, for someone who doesn't live in Florida and maybe like right. I, like I'm in Southern California, so I know um, – you know, the wrestling schools around here, they're real limited. So for aspiring wrestlers that maybe not live in a, in the locale where a name has a school at, what would you advise them to do? Um, I would say, um, uh, you know, it's not to say that if your school doesn't have, if your trainer doesn't have a name that you're not going to go anywhere. That's, that's not what I'm saying at all. Um, but, uh, if you can, I think if you can meet as many people in the business as you can and learn from as many people as you can, uh, that ultimately you're going to land somewhere. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, being trained by someone who, who's never been to television or who maybe, who maybe never enjoyed uh, a great deal of success in the business – uh, is not to say that uh, you won't. I don't want to. I don't want to uh, say that at all. Yeah, I, 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 I get you. Yeah, if 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 your trainer has experience on television, it is a it is an enormous help. Right, it is a huge help. So it sounds like growing up, you were probably more of a ECW WCW fan, maybe. <laughs> hey, you called it, man. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I wasn't one of those guys who was always flipping back and forth during the Monday Night Wars. I was a WCW guy through and through. Um, like like I, like you heard when I said uh, who my favorite guys were back then. They were all mostly WCW guys. Uh, when I did eventually cross over and start watching both, I, I immediately fell in love with the guys that like uh, that commanded the audience, that really captivated everybody. Obviously, The Rock was in there, Stone Cold Steve Austin. Uh, Shawn Michaels, all those guys were, um, just astonishing to me. And at the time I, I, they, those guys were such humongous personalities 
uh, it made me wonder, oh man, I don't know if I could ever do it like those guys, you know, Mm -hmm. but, uh, something I want to, I want to say to you, you know, um, is that good, bad or indifferent, however people feel about impact wrestling and, and T and everything. Um, it's a pretty major accomplishment to appear on their program. And, you know, I think, uh, one day if you, you know, when it's time for you to kind of hang up the boots and say, all right, I'm, I'm, I'm done with this, um, time to move on to, to something else. Or when you just decide it's that time, you know, I, I think to, to look back and say, you know, I, I did live my dream cause I, I got to compete on television, you know, maybe not in the, uh, capacity that I would have, you know, that I may have dreamed about as a kid, but you know, uh, just the fact that you got to compete on television, on a national broadcast, uh, 120 countries and everything. Um, I think it's a, a major accomplishment. So, um, you know, congratulations, you. congratulations to you for that. Thank you very much. Absolutely. I'm very humbled. And, and, and it's just, it's just been so crazy. Sometimes I actually have to remind myself that I did it, you know, because I, I, I forget, <laughs> I know it sounds weird, but, but, uh, it's like, Hey man, you've got television experience. Remember you've done that now. I was like, <laughs> oh, yeah, I did that. that's crazy. And then it's like, I relive it all over again. Uh, I'm never going to forget it. And I'm never going to forget, uh, all the people that, that encouraged me and, and, uh, pushed me to keep doing it. Even though, you know, sometimes, you know, I'm sure you've talked to guys who, who will tell you sometimes it doesn't seem like anything's ever going to happen. You know what I mean? Right. It's a, it's a, it's a rough business, especially right. for a guy my size and stature. But, uh, I think, I think I'm living proof that if you truly, if you truly believe that you can do it, uh, you can absolutely do it. I think it's a really nice story hearing you talking about, uh, you know, going to a pay-per-view and, and looking over to where you were standing. I think that's, um, I think that's really cool. I'm thinking, I'm sure it's very, uh, very surreal for you. Did you, uh, when, so when you knew you were going to be on TV, did you have like a list of friends, family or whatever, where you're like, Hey, tune in, I'm going to be, I'm going to be on TV. Okay. Yeah. So I, I felt like I was, uh, just, uh, I wouldn't shut up about it. I was, I was so obnoxious. I felt like uh, I told people twice. They're like, "Yeah, you already told me, dude." <laughs> you know, uh, but definitely when I after I got the call after work, I went straight to my mom's and I was like, "Hey, I got a call from Jay today," and and she was, it, everyone was just so uh, so happy for me, so so uh, encouraging, which I really appreciate because I I need it more than more than you know, man. <laughs> Some, you know, it's uh. Like I said, it's a rough business out there, especially for a guy of my size. So, it, it wasn't embarrassing to you in any way, shape, or form to like to go on TV and actually to be squashed. Because I know for some people, I would imagine there's like a level of pride where like I'm not willing to go on TV, even if it's on TV, I'm not willing to go do that. No, no, man, I, I didn't consider myself above it or anything, and and it certainly wasn't embarrassing. Even even if it should be uh, for me, it's not. It's it's uh. It's a huge accomplishment for me, and I'm I'm very proud of it, and I always will be. Very awesome to hear. Um, I want to thank you for coming on. That that's gonna do it uh, for us here on the show. Uh, great interview, great talking to you, and it was it was a fun to to get to know you and to really, um, you know, to learn some of the backstage stuff going on for uh, uh you know, for you and kind of how Impact works and everything. So, uh, definitely thank you for coming on. Yeah, no problem. Thank you so much for having me. It's an honor. It really is. My first ever interview, you guys. Yeah, that's a that's an honor for me too. Um really really glad to have you on and uh definitely hope we see you on Impact again in the future. Well, uh I don't know. I can't say for sure if I'll be back, but all all I can say is uh tune into Impact Wrestling uh Thursday nights at 8 on Pop TV.